Hi, boys and girls. Today we're on lesson 28, Good Friday, on page 150. You can find this in Matthew, chapter 27, verses 1 to 66, Mark, chapter 15, verses 1 to 47, Luke, chapter 23, verses 1 to 55, John, chapter 18, verses 28 to 40, and in John, chapter 19, verses 1 to 42. Let's begin. After they ate the Passover meal, Jesus and some of his disciples went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. While they were in the garden, Judas went to see some temple leaders in Jerusalem. In the garden, Jesus became very sad. Jesus prayed, Father, all things are possible with you. If you will it, I am ready to give up my life to save the lives of all who come after me. Jesus was still praying when Judas arrived with soldiers. Jesus knew why they came. Peter wanted to help protect Jesus from the soldiers, but Jesus told Peter, no. It has to happen this way. All the disciples were afraid and ran away. Then the soldiers arrested Jesus. They took Jesus to the temple leaders in Jerusalem. And the leaders told Jesus, you say you are the son of God. We don't believe you. Okay, so they had their meal from Holy Thursday. And after there, Jesus and the rest of the disciples went to Gethsemane to pray. Jesus was in the garden. He starts praying. and He starts letting God know, like, hey, God, like, you know, everything's possible with you. If you allow it, um, I would like to, you know, give up my life here on earth in order to save the people that are here now and everyone that comes after me um, so that they can be saved from their original sin, which is the sin of Adam and Eve. And as this is happening, these soldiers show up. Remember the temple leaders that Judas uh, turned Jesus into? Uh, Jesus, he turned Jesus um, into them. Uh, for those 20 shekels of silver, remember they gave him the money. So this happens and Peter wants to stop and Jesus says, nope, it has to happen this way. And the reason Jesus says this is because Jesus wants to give up his life. He wants to sacrifice his life in order to protect and save everyone else so, they, so that we can go into the kingdom of heaven. So let's keep going. So the leaders brought Jesus to Pontius Pilate, their governor. He asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said to him, it is as you say. Pilate asked him, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You are correct in saying that I am a king. This is why I was born, and why I should be a witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate says to him, What is truth? And when Pilate had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no fault in him. Pilate did not want to hurt Jesus because his wife had a dream telling her he was innocent. So he asked the crowd, whom do you want me to let go? Barabbas or Jesus? And they all cried out, Barabbas, let Jesus be crucified. So Pilate let Barabbas go and ordered Jesus to be crucified. So this is an interesting part of the night where the temple leaders bring Jesus to their governor. His name is Pontius Pilate. And Pontius Pilate is questioning Jesus. And he's like, are you a king? Like, is this true? He's like, yes, I'm a king. It's exactly what you're saying. I, I'm the king. This is truth. And Pontius Pilate doesn't want to hurt Jesus. He doesn't want to crucify him. He doesn't want to sacrifice him, any of that. Specifically because Pontius Pilate's wife the night before had a dream. And in that dream, she was being told that Jesus was innocent, that he was not a criminal. He wasn't lying or anything like that. He was telling the truth. So because of this, Pontius Pilate is like, okay, I know how to get out of this. I'll give them the choice. Either I let Barabbas go, and Barabbas was this very bad, bad person. He was a very um, bad person who hurt uh, children. He hurt a uh, woman. He, he just was very bad. He was a criminal. And he was already in jail. So he went out to the crowd of people. And he says, listen. You guys really think this is a bad guy? Here's my choice to you guys. I'm going to give you guys a choice. Do you want to let Jesus go into jail and let Barabbas go free? Or keep bad old Barabbas in jail and keep Jesus free? And they're like, no! Put him in jail. Put Jesus in jail. Let Barabbas go and let Jesus go in jail. And he was like, are you, are you serious? You want a legit criminal back out on the streets? And you want this guy, Jesus, in jail because he says he's the son of God? I don't know. Like even to me when I read this part, I was like, what? Barabbas clearly did some bad bad things, criminal things, but Jesus didn't do anything wrong. 
He's just seeing and talking about God and he's preaching to people and teaching them how to pray. Maybe some of the temple leaders might see him as annoying, but I wouldn't see him as a criminal for doing that. So let's keep going and see what happens. Third paragraph. After the leaders were done with Jesus, the soldiers took him. They made him carry a big wooden cross on his back. The soldiers found a man named Simon from a town called Siren. They made him help Jesus carry his cross all the way to a hill called Golgotha. When Jesus, uh, when Jesus reached Golgotha, the soldiers nailed him to the cross and put a sign over his head that said, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. So the, Jesus, the soldiers take Jesus in. And as they're, you know, preparing him to be crucified, to be killed, they make him carry the huge cross on his back. And they find this guy named Simon. He was also, you know, from a town nearby. And they made him also carry the cross as well. Once they got to the top of this mountain called uh, Golgotha, they made Jesus lean all down and they started nailing him to the cross. They nailed him on each of his hands and his palms. And they put one foot on top of the other, and they put a nail through that too. And then on top of where his head was, above his head on the on the cross, they put up a sign that said, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. So they were making fun of him, like, yeah, yeah, this is your King of the Jews, look. So this is a picture of Jesus carrying that cross, and that man, Simon, um, helping him carry it. And you can see how heavy it is. And in the picture here, they didn't talk about it, but there's... Um, a crown of thorns being put on his head, which is like, if you ever held uh, roses, they have thorns on them that are really, really sharp and pointy. And they put them on Jesus' head really, really tight, so it's causing him to get to bleed. You can see here that they kind of whipped him, and he has cuts on his body, and his, um, like on his arms and his legs and his back, and his clothes are being torn. So let's see what happens here. Then the soldiers divided his clothes and waited to make sure he died. After a little while, Jesus died on the cross. There was a rich man named Joseph from a place called Arimathea. He believed and became a follower of Jesus. Joseph went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body so they could bury him. Pilate ordered his soldiers to give the body to Joseph. Joseph, helped by Nicodemus, took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and laid it in his new tomb. Then Joseph had a large stone put against the door of the tomb so that nobody would take the body. Okay, so they take Jesus up this hill. Once he's up there, they nail him down to the cross, and then they start taking his clothes and ripping it up and tearing it off of him. They waited and stood there until they were sure that Jesus had died. After a while of Jesus being up on that cross, this man, a rich man named Joseph from Arimathea, came and he asked Pontius Pilate, that governor that didn't want to hurt Jesus, he asked if he could have Jesus' body so they could properly bury him. Like, it's enough. He died. You guys got what you wanted. Can we please take him down and, you know, bury him? Like, give him a proper funeral. And he said, yeah, that's fine. Go ahead and do that. So he takes him down. They put new clothes on him. They put him in a tomb. And a tomb is like, uh, kind of imagine like a really small cave. And they put a very large stone in front of it to cover up the entrance to the cave, to his tomb, to where his body is laying down. Let's see what happens next. All of Jesus' followers, disciples, and everyone who loved Jesus were very sad. They forgot, but Jesus had told them something very, very important at the Last Supper. He said that he would come again and they would all be together soon. Okay, so all this happens and now everybody's sad. They're mourning. They lost Jesus. He, he was killed. Um, he was tortured. And now he's gone. You know, they put him in the tomb, and he, he's dead. And they're all very sad, but they forgot one very important thing, and that was at the Last Supper, when he was passing out the bread and the wine to everyone, he told them that he was going to come back again, and they were all going to be together soon. So let's see in the next coming um, story, the lesson, let's see what's going to happen. How is Jesus going to come back after this? Let's turn to the next page. Jesus went to the garden to pray. He asked his father for strength to fulfill his promise. Jesus knew that the time was coming for him to die. He was going to sacrifice his life so that each of us could be forgiven for our sins. Sometimes we need to pray to ask God for help to do his will. The Holy Bible teaches us that Jesus prayed three times to accept what he needed to do. When he went to the garden, 
Jesus asked Peter, James, and John to come with him. Jesus was sad, and he wanted his friends to be with him during this difficult time. As Jesus was in the garden praying, Judas came with the soldiers to arrest him. They took Jesus away, and he would eventually die on the cross. You can answer these few questions if you like. You don't have to. The questions are, who do you want to be with you when you're sad? How do they help you? Do you think Jesus' friends helped him? Is it good to have someone to talk to when you are feeling sad or having a hard time? But as Christians, it is very important that we ask God for help. Jesus showed us that we should pray to God when we need help. After Jesus prayed, he was ready to do God's will. Read page. Sacrifice is giving something up for someone else. It is not easy to do. Jesus gave up his life and he had to pray many times for God's help to go through with his sacrifice. We should always remember that though it was hard, Jesus willingly gave his life for us. Again, you don't have to do this question, but if you want to, it asks for you to write something you can give up for someone else and why. Let's keep going. Good Friday is when we remember Jesus' sacrifice. In the Syriac Orthodox Church, Good Friday is also called the Friday of Crucifixion. On this day, there is a very special and beautiful service during which we remember the death of our Lord. Each part of the service is a reminder of how Jesus suffered when he made the perfect sacrifice for our sins. The last part of the service is called the burial of the cross. This is when the priest puts frankincense on the cross, covers it in cotton, and wraps it in a loincloth. Then... It is put in a coffin and buried under the altar for three days. It is removed on the day of resurrection, which is Easter Sunday. The Friday of the crucifixion helps us remember Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. The Bible verse for today is, I am the good shepherd, and I laid down my life for the sheep. John chapter 10, verses 14 to 15. Again, yellow page, you don't have to complete the yellow page if you don't want to, but if you do, it says unscramble the purple and blue letters below. Then fill in the missing words of each verse. Pray when you are blank and blank. What do you think these words should be? Pray for our blank and blank. Pray the blanks blank. You can go ahead and look up these verses in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 18, 1 Timothy 2, in verses 1 to 2. And Matthew 6, verses 9 to 13, for help. All right, now for today's activity, on page 155, it is multiple choice, answer the questions, and then the bonus questions all the way at the end. How did prayer help us? All right, boys and girls, talk to you soon. Bye.